Hey everyone, this is Emmanuel. Hopefully you're having an amazing Halloween today and I wanted to do a quick message uh, for everyone here today. Um, you know, I just came back from uh, Energy Healing Conference at Park City and it was incredible. It was, it was uh, uh, definitely met a lot of like-minded people. I won't put out their names out there, but let's just say that I enjoyed kind of like the event after the event, you know, where it consisted of hanging out with people that were really like-minded and people that were, they realized that we have a very hurt world and that we all need healing. That, you know, no matter how cool you are, no matter how you know, successful you are, no matter whatever, uh, there, are, there are things in our body that are holding us back from being our true version of ourselves. And so uh, I just wanted to do a really quick message for everyone uh, in regards to, uh, you know, Halloween a little bit, but it kind of has a little twist to it, okay? So just kind of work with me a little bit. So. So Halloween, right? So Halloween is, um, it's going to be a very, a lot of people are doing like trunk or treat, which is super cool because they want to be safe around their community. A lot of people are going to be doing, you know, uh, going to people's houses and, you know, getting candy there. So everyone has their own way of doing Halloween. Some people are just going to stay home and watch scary movies. Um, you know, hey Pam, how are you? Uh, so <clears throat> everyone's doing their own thing, but uh, I want to talk about that word scary, right? So scary, uh, you know what is really, really scary? And I really want you guys, if everyone can just take a quick second and take a deep breath in real quick, okay? Let me tell you what's scary. And I really think a lot of people are scared of this thing called death, right? You know, of, of passing away. And I want to kind of share something to you that there's something even scarier than that. And I want to kind of butcher Les Brown's quote where he says that there's nothing, you know, the, the, he said that, you know, he's picturing, he talks about this, this scenario where you're picturing yourself near a, a, a bed and in this bed is just you lying there. And imagine if your talents, your talents and your gifts became personified and they were like people, right? Like, like your gift to heal or your gift to speak powerfully or your gift to uh, relate with people or your, your whatever. These gifts are all around you. And, uh, and they're around you, like you're in bed, right? And these people come around you and they, they personify your gifts and talents. And they said, you know, we came to you and only you could have brought us to life. But now that you've passed away, we die with you, you see? And so it's a very interesting scenario that Les Brown brings up that, that, that wouldn't that be a very interesting situation? You know, another situation would be um, if once we get to the other side, right? Hopefully, hopefully we, we did well on this earth. We go on the other side and then God, he says, that, there was a quote that says, the beginning of hell, hell begins when God shows us all the things we could have done, but we didn't do it. Okay, so I'll say it again. There was a quote that says, hell begins when God shows us all the things we could have done, but we didn't do it. And uh, we look back and we're like, oh my gosh, I could have done that, I could have done that, I could have done that. And so the reality is, is um, you know, I don't wanna like cause this like guilt upon Halloween, I'm not gonna do it, just won't do it. But um, the real thing is, uh, I really believe, and no matter what religion you are, no matter what faith you are, no matter what's going on, that you have a, what they call a mission in life, you know? And so maybe you're watching this video because maybe you've been questioning it recently. Maybe this year you haven't really um, found it yet, but you're still looking for it. Some things are popping up, but you're not kind of kind of like, eh, is that it? And, and the reality is, is I want to also clarify, when I, when I was reading this book about passion, you know, passion is a word that has to do with, uh, you know, Jesus Christ. That's what passion has to do with. And really, it's, it comes from the root of basically sacred suffering. That's kind of where it comes from. So a lot of people, when they go, my passion's got to be something that I'm always excited about, 100%, always, always excited. And, and uh, you know, I'm always high on life, like, like time stops. Sure, you'll have those moments for sure. But one of the things that you need to understand is, Reword, reword, or filter your passion this way, and say, um, "What am I willing to suffer for?" You know, for example, if I the things that I do with as a, as an emotion code, body code practitioner, if someone told me, "Look, you're going to live in a very comfortable box, and you're going to live, you're going to have some, uh, you have a very good sandwich that you really like, and your family's taking care of, blah blah blah," I would still do what I do. So, what's the point of that? Is that I don't need to become wealthy uh, to, to, to go out there and help heal people with the modality that I use. 
And hey, Brandy. Um, so, so that's the thing. So I, I think it's really, really important. Like, what are you willing to suffer for? Now, if you're in a job right now that said, if I told you I'm going to cut your paycheck, you're not going to get paid anymore, would you stay at that job? Most people would say no. So, so technically, you haven't found your passion yet. So here's what I want to tell you. Uh, I want to tell you one real quick story. <laughs> Shields up. Yeah, I want to tell you one real quick story. And uh, what happened at this energy healing conference, I think will really blow your mind. I really want you guys to, somebody needs to hear this story. And if you can share this with your friends and family, I really think someone's going to appreciate this. So what happened was, is obviously we have these things called trapped emotions stuck in our bodies, right? But there's also this thing called the preconception trapped emotion. So what is a, a preconception trapped emotion? Preconception trapped emotion is when you are in your, so there's, there's your body, right? And then there's your spirit, right? And, um, you know, your spirit controls the body, things like that. Now, before the body, there was just the spirit by itself. And you were with, at some point, with God, your creator, right? This is what Dr. Brad believes, um, who wrote the book, The Emotion Code, uh, which is right here. Actually, I just got my, got my signed copy over here at the conference just because... Uh, I had to do it, you know, even though we've been friends for a while. But, you know, you never signed my book. But he, read this book, The Emotion Code by Dr. Brad. And um, anyway, he talks about these trapped emotions. What he doesn't talk about in there is this thing called preconception trapped emotions. Trapped emotions you can receive while you're in the spirit. So this is spirit and body, but this is no body yet. Like you haven't been born yet. You haven't had a body. There's a, there's a spirit trapped emotion you can have. And what's really interesting is that the question is, how long have you had that trapped emotion in the spirit world? So think about it. We always kind of curious, how did Mozart, how did Beethoven become so good at music, right? Like, have they been practicing for years? They've been studying for years, decades, you know? And the reality is they could have been studying for hundreds of years. And by the time they were five, they just remembered everything they, they learned, and boom, they become a prodigy, you see? And so the reality is, is that um, there's, there's this spirit, there's this preconception trapped emotion. Now here's the thing, this lady that had a horrible headache, this lady had a headache for over 20 years. She spent over $100,000 on any type of treatment you can have for her headache. Guess what Dr. Brad found through muscle testing? Found out that uh, she had a ethmoid bone, like so it's this bone that, he, he kind of said in a funny way, he said if you were to kind of poke your eye, go all the way in there, it's like up here area, uh, that was imbalanced and it was imbalanced by an emotion. There's this energy called emotional resonance energy. Okay, if you guys are taking notes, it's kind of a cool thing, cool story. So this lady, 20 years, hasn't been able to like not shake off this headache. That's a very long time. He found out that there's this ringing energy inside the body called an emotional resonance energy and it was stuck, like vibrating the ethmoid bone. So bones can these energies can take the shape of the bone and then cause it to like vibrate a certain way emotionally and it causes a pain. And she, she's tried everything, obviously $100,000, right? Now, he muscle tested and asked her and said, where'd you get this from? And it went all the way back to uh, a moment that she recalled so easily. She's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you're, you, you're calling out this moment in front of all this, everyone there. But it's basically her teacher humiliating her and saying, uh, you know, you're a horrible singer. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend singing anymore. Like this class isn't for you. And she was taking vocal classes. Like there were people in that room and in front of everybody, this teacher said, you, you can't sing. You're, just, you're not meant to sing. I, I don't, I think you're wasting your time in this class. So think about how humiliating that was. Guess what? Uh, an emotional resonance energy shows up when you have an emotion that you feel and then there's this, it, it, the, what's left over is this ringing energy, almost like a bell, like bing, and it just rings off, right? And it actually got stuck in the ethmoid bone, and then boom, the headaches began from then, and she couldn't figure it out that. So she got rid of, they got rid of that, and they removed it using the magnet in front of everyone. But then he says, you also have this preconception trapped emotion. Again, body, spirit, this was in the spirit world before she even came here. And Dr. Brad says, look, we don't really talk about this a lot. I wouldn't, you know, he's like, you don't have to figure this out when you're working with someone. You can just acknowledge that it's a preconception trapped emotion. But then he says, how old is this preconception trapped emotion? And he said it went, it went 100 years, 200 years, 300 years, 400, 500, 600. But he was muscle testing her. And it was like 700, it was like 800 years? No. So it was less than 800, 777. So it ended up being 777 years ago. How is that possible? Well, in the spirit world, uh, she, like I said, he believes, and I believe too, that 
you know, I believe that our family um, looks over us all the time. Your family, you think if they're far away, they're not. I really believe that they're close to us. They're assisting us in life. Um, they're um, maybe even answers to prayers. You know, he, they might say, God, let me take care of this. I'm the grandfather. I would love to help him out in the situation. Families are, are, are united uh, beyond the veil. Now, what's interesting is that did we care about our family before us? Of course, we would care about our generation. Does that not make sense to you that you would care about your generational family before you? And Dr. Brad says through testing, which I believe was muscle testing and prayer and whatever he uses, he found out that it, there's a high possibility that we were ministering angels, helping our families before us. So you had family that was around 600 years ago. We were helping them out. And we were learning, studying about the earth, learning about the geography, whatever we were, we were just studying and becoming ourselves. Don't you think, let's just use this lady for an example, 777 years ago, don't you think within that time, maybe she found out what she likes, what she loves, what she's good at? Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's just when she found the preconception trapped emotion. That, that could have, her life was, her life has been eternal, but I'm just saying that I'm pretty sure, let's just use the 777, that's a long time to probably figure out what your mission in life is, what you love doing, what you like, you know, because you've seen from history, oh, look at that music, oh, wow, I love the sound of that harp, you know, 1497. Now you have all this time before you were actually born, and then once you're born, you forgot that you were even studying that, but then all of a sudden, for some reason, I like music, I don't know why, huh, you know, so the thing is, is there... I'm, I'm, I want to let you know, whoever is watching this, that I really believe we all have a God-given mission. The reason why I say God-given doesn't mean God just gave it to you. Um, it's what makes us happy, you know, and, and then God probably was studying with you or helping you out and was saying, okay, yeah, that's a, that's a great talent supporting you and things like that. And all of us here on this earth, if we're feeling slightly depressed or we're feeling slightly off, we feel like, you know, life isn't giving you what you, what you need in life to have a happy heart. I'm telling you, it's because you haven't found your mission yet. And if you've found your mission, it's only confirmed with your mind and not with your heart. And so uh, I definitely want to let you guys know, uh, hey, Manuel, cool name, by the way. Um, I want to let you guys know that it's really, really interesting that uh, for the first time ever on stage, I've seen Dr. Brad say, you know, hey, let's figure out how old this preconception trapped emotion, how long has the spirit, not even the body, how long has the spirit been holding on his trapped emotion? And he said 777. So 777 years, like I said, don't you think we would have found our mission around that time? So if you've ever questioned, do I really have a mission in life or is this all there is? I want to let you know that you do have a mission in life. Through muscle testing, through prayer, through Dr. Brad's studying, everyone has a mission and it's all about finding clarity on what it is. But if there's anything you feel like is missing, it's because you either, like I said, you have it in your mind you, that you have a mission, but your heart is not confirmed. That's why you want to look up, go on YouTube right now and look up heart wall, 15 minutes. Again, look up heart wall, so heart and then wall, 15 minutes. That'll give you more information about what that is. But that's the major, major reason why people don't, they, they might be doing their mission, like they're doing real estate or, or they're doing, um, you know, they're, they're a tax account or they're, they're even being like, you know, they're, they're a custodian, whatever. Maybe their calling was to be cleaning stuff. Like, you know, I'm not, there's no such thing as lower or higher calling. A calling is a calling. But when you're doing it though, maybe you're not being present and you're not receiving that high joy, elation. Then that's because there's, there's something in the heart that's preventing you from confirming with the mind, right? It's not as you think it in your liver, so are you in the scriptures, and not as you think it in your adrenal glands, it's as you think it in your heart. So there's something in the heart going on that that that's where you know your mission. And so uh, so again, I just wanna just totally let everyone know, if you're watching this, this is the first time you've watched me, or maybe you've watched me before, I want you to share this message out that the biggest fear that we should have is not Halloween, it's not a witch, it's not, it's not um, you know, a scary you know, ghoul near the door. The scariest thing so far in life is death and public speaking. But let's get rid of public speaking real quick. Let's just talk about death, but there's something scarier than death. I think I believe it's not finding your mission in life and death. I think, that, I think that's, again, that scenario that, that Les Brown was talking about. People all around your deathbed, these talents and gifts personified in a person looking down at you and said, only you, could have brought us out. Only you could have accentuated us. Only you could have brought us to fruition. 
but now you die here. We die. Our gifts and talents die with you. As I said, what's the most expensive soil on the planet? What's the most expensive soil on the planet? If you're a real estate agent, maybe you know, oh, it's Dubai, or no, it's uh, Northern California, or it's in um, you know certain parts of Mexico. No, the richest, the richest soil in the world is the cemetery because people die with their gifts and talents with them. That's the richest soil. And so I don't want to do that. I know you don't want to do that. So this maybe this is like it's the end of the year. It's like you know almost end. Of the end. We're gonna go to 2019. It's not too late. If you're, even if you're 70 years old and you're watching this right now, there's a reason why you still have a heartbeat. You know, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Colonel Sanders, you know, not the greatest food for you, but the thing is, is with a social security check of less than $100, around 60 years old, started knocking on a thousand doors to figure out his mission in life. It's never too late. If you're 70 years old watching this right now and you still haven't found it yet, it's not too late. There's a reason why your heart's still beating. It's because you have something to do. And you've studied it for hundreds and hundreds, even maybe thousands and thousands of years before you came here, and it's burning inside of you. You just got to remove the energy, um, remove the energies that are in front of your heart. Again, check up this YouTube called Heart Wall 15 Minutes, and uh, that'll really help you to clarify uh, you know, what is holding you back. So with that, hopefully you appreciate this message. Share this with your friends and family. Post this on your wall. Be like, you know what's scarier than Halloween? And then go ahead and... And then post this video uh, on your on your wall or share something like, hey, this is scarier than Halloween. And because it's true, honestly, sc- Halloween is not scary. Passing away is scary. But you know what? Passing away not knowing your mission is scarier. And I don't want anyone to do this. And I really believe from the bottom of my heart, I don't know you. I really believe everyone has a mission in life. And I'm going to stand to that till my heart passes away that everyone that I talk to, I can stare them right at the face, to right at their eyes and say, I know you don't know me, but you have a mission in life. And the greatest joy you will find is when you find that mission and you help a lot of people with it. So with that, I love you guys. This is Emmanuel, your body code practitioner. Hopefully you appreciated this message and we'll talk soon. Take care. Bye-bye.